Hey guys, Chad Hoover, Kayak Bass Fishing, and today we are at beautiful Bienville Plantation, White Springs, Florida, for our annual KBF The 10. Now this year we're welcoming DZ as title sponsor of the event, so it's the KBF DZ The 10. But we've switched things up and we've added a new event this year. The 10 is the top 10 anglers across the country that come down here and duke it out for a guaranteed first place $10,000 payout. This year we've added payouts down to fifth place, but we've also added another twist. We've invited the top anglers from across the country, past champions, guys that have fished in the top 10% of major events for what we're calling the KBF DZ The Tinvitational. So you only can come to this event if you get the invite by being in that top 10%. So that's why we call it the Tinvitational. Now, we've got a guaranteed payout for the Tinvitational, but what these guys are really fishing for is a wild card slot to win their way in to the 10. It's gonna be interesting to see how it all plays out. We had a cold snap last night. The low was 29 degrees, but coming off of past weeks of uh, highs in the 60s and even mid 70s, these bats have already moved up. I got here yesterday and drove around and I can already, already see the bucks doing their work. So the pre-spawn pattern is gonna be in full swing. Gene Jensen and Scott Butcher are joining me for this episode because they're gonna get out there and pre-scout while I set up for the event and see if they can't find some hungry bass. That's what I love about beautiful grass and hills. I love to fish Florida in January and February of, the, uh, of every year. That's one of those things, it's like my birthday. I always look forward to it. Hey, Scott, grab my nines. <laughs> if they're spawning, I'm gonna need them. There so, thanks, man. Those nines are where it's at. Much better. Yeah. The reason is, is because in Florida, they start to spawn in December, January, February. So you have a lot of pre-spawners. The females are really big. The rest of the country is freezing cold, so we're able to come down here, a little bit warmer weather, and catch fish that are just massive and lots of them, and they pull up to the bank and just makes it really easy and a lot of fun. I'm trying to figure out what kind of a mood they're in, if they're sitting in this spot. I'm trying different retrieves and different speeds, and once I figure that out, I pretty much can use that knowledge to use other lures to catch them. So on this next retrieve, the last retrieve is kind of a bounce off the bottom and see what happened. And then this one's literally, I'm gonna drag, I'm crawl it is what I call it, just so I barely feel the vibration of the, of the blade. And mood is everything a lot of times. So that's something, something's caught up there. That's not uh, turning how I wanted to turn. I keep a chatterbait tied on all the time, everywhere that I go. Uh, in particular, uh, the, uh, the Z-Man, <laughs> I carry a box. Um, of the jackhammers, I call them the thunder chickens. But, uh, um, so what I'm gonna do is this water's super clear. Uh, we're down here all the time, I knew that coming into it. I already had this ties on, so I was being lazy because I'm a fisherman and that's what I do. And I knew that that white gun wasn't gonna work, so I'm actually going the complete opposite side. I'm gonna pull up the same, same bait, just a different color, and, uh, and see if we can put a couple in the hook there. So, there's definitely some activity in the water. It's not as cold as, as we anticipated. So, uh, I'm really hoping that, uh, once we nail down this pattern and we find the right lure color, that, uh, that maybe we can go smash some. Oh, I think I have something. Hold on a second. All right, man, this is a good one. Um, what I did is I pulled up into a protected pocket and the water temperature just came up two degrees, or two, two tenths of a degree. And uh, literally, I'm not even in the pocket yet, and I got bit. I changed to what's called a Tokyo rig with a little worm on it. And this one's about four and a half, maybe five pounds. It's a big one. It is a really nice one. Come here. <laughs> Whoa! That sure sounds good. Man, look at that fish. <laughs> Looks like he got one. Let's go see how he did it. <laughs> look at the, I mean, you talking about a perfectly shaped fish. Man, this is a beautiful fish. About a five pounder, five and a half pounder. Um, Pre-spawn female, big and fat. Look, she's got eggs right here, getting ready to spawn here in the next couple of days. 
Man, what I did is I just pitched into the grass and I came to the outside edge of the grass, which is only about two and a half feet deep, and just shook it once. And it was, it, the Tokyo rig's a new rig. I made a video not too long ago about it, but uh, it's uh, basically a, a short little drop shot, but instead of a drop line, it has a piece of metal, a metal wire that comes down and it just allows your bait to sit up above the bottom a little bit, makes it an easier bite. And she definitely bit it. Oh, it's going to be an awesome tournament if they continue to bite like this. Nice, good catch, good catch. There she goes. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Did you get any steals? Uh, no, but I'll catch another one. There you go. There's that confidence I like. <laughs> <laughs> Move it along. Move it along. Nope, oh, he dropped it. Little one. Definitely was not a big fish. Let's go down. Almost like a glove. Powerful back up. And that would be a male. Only time of the year you can tell the difference. <laughs> and my first bite and miss of the day. All right, so what happened is I really think this male is making a bed right over there. I cast it in, I got bit, he swam off with it, with it and then dropped it. And I'm like, hmm. So I cast it back in there again. And, uh, and as soon as he bit, I hammered him and got him. And I bet you money there's a bed sitting right over there. Go make babies. Cut to the sexy music. Bwow, chicky, bwow, bwow. All right, ladies, listen here. All you big girls, the first one of you that comes see me, I'm gonna kiss you right on the mouth, all right? All right, so right now I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this off. You know, you're limited with a number of rods you can put on a kayak, and I usually fish with, with five rods. And this is the only one that's ideal for the, what the next technique I wanna try, which is a lighter weight worm. I'm gonna use the same type of worm. I'm gonna put a, a hook and just a light sinker in front of it so I can fish actually on top of the grass. I found out by making this, uh, casting this a few times, the grass out here is about two and a half feet deep from the top to the bottom. And when this thing falls down into that grass, the bass aren't down there, they're up on top. So I'm gonna just change to something I can glide and drag across the top of the grass. So just gonna lighten things up a bit. Fish. Ah, oh, come on, he's, he's a little one. <laughs> I was actually swimming this worm. Come on, give me what we want. I may have to go just a straight sinko here in a minute so we can at least get a fish on the board. Yep, I didn't feel that bite. Cause it's a little one. Look at that little guy. Look at that little guy. <laughs> I was just dragging the same worm. Um, this is a real shallow area, but it's a long point that goes way out and then just drops off into about 15, 20 feet of water. And so this is those spots just on the mouth of a, of a spawning cove that bass are gonna pull up and they're gonna stage. We'll go ahead and let that little guy go. You know what? I want a worm actually, don't you think? We're gonna go with a big old black and blue. See if we can get one of these girls to eat it. How the hell did that just happen? If we're not catching a fish, at least maybe we can tell them a story. <laughs> right? <laughs> tell you what, let's see if anything hits this underspin before we go change the plastic. Just see if we get a bite, because there are fish right across through here, so. I can't tell if that's grass. That's gotta be grass, yep. That's not what we want. I may have to come off of this underspin, even though I thought it was gonna work. Oh, 
Worst kayak angler in the world right here, guys. My name's Sky Butcher, and uh, I officially suck at kayak fishing. <laughs> All right, guys, so these guys spent most of the, the morning, all right, we got a front moving in, they got to jump off the water, it is about, the bottom is about to fall out. Okay, so, before y'all left, you said chatterbait, you yep. said you're gonna do the chatterbait, did you Go catch ahead. them on a chatterbait? No. No no fish on a chatterbait? No fish on a chatterbait. Okay, so, did you catch them? Yes. Okay, did you catch them? Did not. Did not, okay. I know so, what not to do. All right, well then, I don't need you for this segment. <laughs> so anyway, so Gene, what did you catch the fish on? What'd you catch Actually, them on? Actually, the big fish was about a five, five and a half pounder. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, came off a hard edge and I was throwing a Tokyo rig with a paddle tail worm. And the reason I did that is one, it was tied on. Two, it's a great bait to get on those hard edges where you have a drop off on the grass and it's hard bottom and just sit there and shake it. And so I shook so it. So not fishing a Tokyo rig as a punching bait, fishing it as, as a, a bottom bait. Yeah, as a bottom bait. Yep. So look at that. Boy. But anyway, you guys stay tuned. We're gonna get back out there and see if we can't find some fish. This is the KBF DZ, the Tinvitational, here from beautiful uh, Bienville Plantation in White Springs, Florida.